What's happening everybody? Sean Daniel here with Guitar Control. Today we are learning my absolute favorite Steely Dan song, an acoustic version of it, uh, Dirty Work. Really, awesome song. I think we're gonna do it in maybe a different way than you've seen it before that kind of explains the fretboard and songwriting a little bit. So make sure you click the link below because I'm gonna have a chord chart with all the chords that match up the lyrics you can kind of play along. Sing with it, do your thing, okay? So we have two main parts and the first part is gonna sound like this. Okay, so this is gonna be the verse chord progression that we have. And now you'll notice that I'm actually using bar chords for a lot of these when I don't need to. Now, even if you're not down with bar chords, we're still gonna talk about this and you can still play this whole thing. But after we teach the beginning chord progression in open chords, I wanna go back to the bar chords because I think it might kind of unlock a little bit of understanding about songwriting in general, okay? So I think the best way to do this is just to pair these off into chord groupings, right? So if we just kind of think of these as four two chord progressions, it's really easy to remember, all right? So we have A minor, to a D minor, to a G, to a C, to an F major, to a B flat, to C and back to G. So it might kind of seem like a longer chord progression, uh, you know, relative to other things, but really valuable. So the, just the strumming, if we start on A minor, the strumming of that is gonna be like a one, two, three, four and, okay? Now when I say that, instead of down and up, so like down, 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 up, I think it's really good to count musically. One, two, three, four and. And you can kind of dynamically play it a little bit. So when I say by dynamically play it, we're just kind of splitting that chord into pieces. So regular A minor, middle finger 2D, ring finger 2G, pointer finger 1B, and then maybe I'm hitting the bottom five strings, the highest five strings. On the one, the downbeat, I'm hitting just the open A string, right? On the two, I'm hitting maybe just the D string. I'm aiming for it. If I don't hit just that, that's fine. You don't have to be as precise. We're just kind of getting a cool vibe that goes along with the song. So one, two, three, four, and, okay? So after those first two hits, A string, D string, I'm getting the higher part of the chord, and then I'm going down, on the three count, and then down again on the four count, and then up on the and of four. One, two, three, four, and. It's gonna help you stay in time if you think about it more like that instead of down, 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 up. One, two, three, four, and. Okay? That's just one bar, one four count on an A minor. Then we're gonna switch to D minor. Middle finger 2G, pinky or ring finger 3B, pointer finger 1 on the high E string. Same thing. One, two, three, four, and. Okay, I'm aiming for just the D string on the one count, just the G string on the two count. Three, hit the whole chord. Four, hit it again. And then on the and of four, go straight up. One, two, three, four, and D. Now the great thing about doing it this way with open chords, specifically in this key, which this key is pretty much in the key of C is how we're looking at it. There's some chords that we borrow from other keys. But all the open strings are gonna help us out. So we can actually leave that A minor, on the and of four to get to the D minor. That's something that like you might want to start trying a lot of times because if you're waiting for your fretting hand to get to the next chord, it'll sound like this. One, two, three, four, and. One, two, three, four, and. And then it's kind of choppy. So it's kind of cool to hit those open string sets every now and then. It'll sound fine. One, two, three, four, and. One, two, three, four, and G to C. So, our first chord pairing is A minor to D minor. Our second one is gonna be G to C. You probably already know these chords. Middle finger, third fret on the E string, pointer finger, second fret on the A string, ring finger, third fret on the high E string. You can do really any kind of G major chord you want. We're gonna do the same thing. Strike the root note on the one, on the two, hit the A string, three, four, and the rest of the chord, and then switch it to C. Right? So uh, again, C major is ring finger 3A, middle finger 2D, open G, pointer finger 1B, open E, okay? Now at this point, I kind of like doing a little bit of a different strum. So in context, A minor, D minor, G. Since it's kind of like that fourth of a four chord thing, usually kind of like the back end of these 
it's usually, usually symmetrical groups of two or four. You might want to do a little bit of something different strumming wise. You don't have to, totally optional. This is just the way I play it. Just kind of adding a little more going on. So G. So, I'm not really hitting the root note as much. I'm just kind of going down up on the one and. One and, two, three, four and. I just think that kind of has a nice, you know, little action, something different on that fourth chord of a four chord progression, or two groupings of two, right? A minor, D minor, G major, C. Okay, and then we're gonna go to an F major chord. Instead of making it a bar chord, let's make it easy on ourselves and just do this. Ring finger, third fret on the A string, pinky third fret on the D string, middle finger, second fret on the G string, pointer finger, first fret on the B string. To B flat, okay? B flat can be uh, kind of a difficult one if you're not totally down with bar chords, specifically if you wanna root it on the first fret of the A string like this. It's kind of like a double bar chord. You might have an easier time playing a B flat with the F major shape, but just rooted on the sixth fret. So, you know, if you don't want to do that double bar chord, you can go from this F major chord. Totally fine. Some people would even prefer the sound of that slide in there. Any kind of A sharp, B flat major chord totally works, right? For the purpose of this, I'm just gonna stick with this one on the A string. You can even just play it like an A major. One fret higher. Never be deterred by bar chords because there's always a different way that you can do it that'll that's suitable for your skill level, even if it's just a single note, which we're gonna get to in a second. But after that, we're gonna go back to C major. To G, okay? So, in recap, we have A minor, D minor, G, C, F, B flat, C, G, okay? Now real quick, bear with me, I wanna talk about just the root notes and how they're moving along. It's gonna be a much easier way to remember this progression, all right? So instead of playing open A minor, let's just play a single A note on the fifth fret of the low E string, okay? This is gonna be our first note in the progression. We're gonna go down a string. A to D, like representative of A minor to D minor. Then we're gonna go from G to C. So starting on a fret, going down a string. Back two frets, start again, go down a string. Back two frets again, down a string. So really it's a super easy song to remember conceptually, especially when you see them as root notes. D to A, or A to D, G to C, F to B flat, and then bring it back home from C to G, all right? Now if you play these as bar chords, like an A minor to D minor, to G major, to C major, to F, to B flat, to C, to G. That might, that to me, that's the easier way to organize the chords. Now, even if you don't play them that way, I think it's good to think conceptually like that, right? Because, you know, I've been there before. I play, at these shows I play, I have to play like tons of songs. So it's always, I need some way to kind of cheat how to remember things because you know, when you play like, 80 songs in like a three hour set or whatever it ends up being, it's hard to stay off of a sheet the entire time. So this is just one kind of good shortcut into seeing these different chord progressions, right? Now before we get to the chorus progression, the last thing we have to do is just change that last chord. Instead of ending on a G major, we're gonna end on a D minor. And what that does, it actually kind of presents a little bit of tension. So here's the example. If we start with A minor, this is the verse, right? To D, G, to C, F, to B flat, C, back to G, back to A. Okay, that kind of leads nicely to what we're doing. Back to G to C, F, B flat, C, D minor. Then after this, if we go to a different part of the song, specifically a C major, right? D minor, C major, F, A minor to B flat. Okay, this is gonna be the next part of the song. Really easy. C to F, A minor, B flat. Okay, again, we're just kind of moving around a little bit through 
these different chords, borrowing chords from different keys, all right? Now, again, if there's one thing I wanna to do to connect these, it's pretty much the same strumming after you get from that D minor. One, two, three, four, and the, st the heavy beats are gonna be the down beat on the one and the three, and then the four and the and of four is gonna be a down up. One, two, three, four, and, or one, two, three, four, and. However you wanna play it, that's gonna be the space that you do it, however busy you wanna make the arrangement. Now we're gonna go to F, to A minor, to B flat. And then the super important part that you have to do, I don't care what skill level you're at, I'm gonna make you walk this B flat to this C. One, 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 two, three. To F, to A minor, back to that B flat. One, 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 two, three. However you want to do it, you can do a couple. One, two, three. You can do a, a couple of them on this first fret of the A string. I'm just going with my pick. I'm alternating down, up, down, up, down, down to get from that one, that B flat, to a B, to a C. But you need to make that connection. Back to that first chord. Just like that, right? Because that's kind of a, again, this is an acoustic version of the song. And again, Steely Grand, one of, the, one of the great bands of all time as far as playing together and really just getting like a super tight Amazing recorded sound is it just a representative of this on an acoustic guitar that kind of takes some of the cool things that they do as a unit, right? So again, just two chord progressions. That's the entire song. We're we're leaving out the saxophone solo part. <laughs> Unless you have a sax friend, then you know, come at me, bro. Whatever, it's all good. This is just going to be kind of an acoustic companion to the song. If you know you're playing with the singer, if you're singing it yourself. In recap, A minor to D minor. To G, to C, F, B flat, C, then to G. Start again, A minor, D minor, everything is the same so far. G, to C, to F, B flat, here's where it changes, it just says C, but then D minor. Then C, to F, A minor. Flat. However you want to play that, make sure you get it in there. And again, with the lyrics, it's three times. And then, uh, kind of like a fourth time. I personally think they should have sang that part four times, but again, who am I to judge the great Sealy Dan? Anyways, really cool song that is a fun one to play, and it's kind of a cool way to kind of just think about moving around the fretboard a little bit. Try it out, challenge yourself with the bar chords. You'll be happy that you did. And if you have any questions or comments, hit us up in the comments section. Also make sure to check out other videos on the Guitar Control channel by me, other great instructors. If you have something you wanna see that you haven't seen before, let us know in the comments and we will get working on it and bring it to you. Thanks a lot.